Hey everyone, in this tutorial, we're gonna show you how to make a auto stereogram using Motion Boutique's auto stereogram plugin. Stereograms you may have seen before, perhaps you've seen something that looks like this. Uh, they're also known as magic eye pictures. There is, uh, that, that I believe is a copyrighted company term. But essentially what you get is something that looks like a bunch of random noise. And when you view it by, in one of two ways, you get a 3D image that pops off the screen and you can see it. And that's why auto stereograms are so fun. It's a way of viewing 3D without any glasses uh, or without any fancy um, VR goggles. You can view a 3D image right on a 2D plane. So I encourage you to do your own research about auto stereograms because they are very cool. They've been around for a very long time. Even Dolly, Salvador Dolly was making auto stereograms back in the day using his, uh, his uh, with, by hand with paint. But basically it's a series of repeating textures across a 2D plane. And when you either cross your eyes or look through the image in order to overlap those textures, the differences between the repeating texture give you the depth. So uh, Jared and I made a whole music video using this plugin uh, for the band Soons. Uh, there'll be a link to that in the description. We'll show you how to make an auto stereogram using the plugin. So this is uh, After Effects. I created a standard comp, 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. And uh, I'll show you how I did this. I just You just create an adjustment layer. I'm gonna call it auto stereogram. Although you don't have to call it that, it's just so that you know what layer is what. And I'll grab our plugin, Auto Stereogram for Motion Boutique, drop it on. And we don't see anything yet, which is normal because it's asking us for something. We need a depth map. What is a depth map layer, Luca? What is a depth map layer? That's the question everyone's asking. A depth map is this. It's a black and white image where uh, white represents something close to you and black represents something far away. So it's a representation of depth. It can be created in Cinema 4D, uh, Blender, even like Unreal Engine, basically any uh, 3D program has a way to export a depth map. Just Google it. I might make a follow-up tutorial with Jared about doing it in Unreal, which is a, a method that we figured out. We love using Unreal for like anything we can these days. Depth map layer, we're going to change this to the one we just brought in and there it is, our beautiful auto stereogram. So you can't, it, it, unless you look at it in a specific way, you don't get the effect. But uh, Jared, maybe you can explain how to look at an auto stereogram. There are two main types of ways to view auto stereograms. Convergence, uh, we'll start with, is like what is also known as a crossed eye method. Some people have an easier time viewing stereograms this way. The other way is divergence, which is also known as the normal method, or some people call it the look through method. You may have seen people trying to view stereograms by doing this, where they bring the book up to their nose and then pull it away. That's because they're viewing something in a divergence method, where you're focusing on a point beyond the screen, and that's causing you to overlap the two layers of texture. So when you lock them in together, you are given the illusion of depth that way. I'm gonna put it on convergence for this tutorial. That's because you love um, convergence. I'm a divergence I... <laughs> guy. <laughs> because obsessed with convergence. Try them both, pick the one that feels best to you. Maybe ask some people around you which one is easier for them to see. It's kind of, it's up to you which one you choose. Uh, repetition period. Um, this has to do with the tiling of the image and the tiling is where the depth comes from. A lower number gives you more tiling. Uh, a higher number gives you less tiling. Play around with uh, what you like, what you think looks good and what feels good. We found somewhere around 200 to be nice, but uh, we'll drop it to 192 because that gives us exactly 10 tiles uh, because our width is 1920. We did notice that the uh, on a smaller screen, you may find that a larger repetition period with more pixels is better because you're viewing a smaller image. And on a larger screen, like a computer screen, you may be able to get away with a smaller repetition period um, because it is easier to overlap your eyes with, with less pixels. Uh, oversampling. This setting here will actually like 
reprocess your depth map to make it appear a bit smoother and maybe get rid of some stepping or jaggies that you might find otherwise. The default setting of four is fine. You can go lower or higher, play with what you like, what, what looks good to you. We kind of leave it at four, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Post-processing is another little feature that helps out when you're working with random dots. That's because the post-processing, um, when you're exporting this to like an MP4 for YouTube or something, YouTube hates this kind of compression. It's just like noise. It just turns into like mush. But what you could do is blur it a little bit and then sharpen it and you end up with something a bit chunkier. And this actually compresses better. Uh, mm -hmm. You could use the built-in post-processing here or you could just throw on like a Gaussian blur followed by an uh, unsharp mask or something like that. And you get like kind of thicker grain. And again, mm -hmm. play with that to taste. Yeah, if you're finding that your videos when you upload it are just turning to mush, you probably need to give yourself a chunkier grain um, by some blurring and some sharpening. And that is just trial and error to see what works well depending on the platform you're delivering on. So now the, the feature that really lets you art direct uh, this plugin is actually the pattern setting. If, let, let's try something else. Let's try changing random dots to texture. And here, we don't have a texture right now, but we can use a custom texture instead of random dots. And this is what you see in our Soons video. We used a lot of like paper textures and custom like cell textures and cool noise. And I'll show you one example that we have here included uh, in the download. You can download this whole project file and play around with it yourself uh, if you have the plugin. This is our auto stereogram texture file. It's a vertical strip of uh, a repeating texture created using the cell uh, effect in After Effects and some glitching. Well, let, let's drop this into our comp and on our auto stereogram effect, we will change the pattern to texture. It's already changed and texture layer. Let's plug in our texture. And now we can see that our vertical strip is being repeated across the screen in a texture image instead of a uh, random dot. Now, just a quick word on the actual scaling of your texture layer. If you input something that is the same size as your composition, it will work. It will just crop it into whatever your uh, repetition period is, so the width of the pixels that you give it. Um, we found that by making it an exact size, we could keep the file size a little smaller. So we just used exactly the uh, height we needed and the width that we needed for our repetition period. The one thing that we will say is that you can use all different scales, but it's a good idea to use a texture that's at least as high as your composition. So at least as number of the number of pixels tall as your composition, because that will prevent it from tiling horizontally as well as tiling vertically. You'll just tile horizontally, which is all you really uh, need. All auto stereograms are made up of just a series of vertical columns. Um, so your texture should be at least the height of your composition. You'll find that you have a better, you'll end up with a more invisible uh, texture layer. And just a few other things, notes on making your own custom textures. We found that some noise that was uh, moving was better. If there's motion in your texture, it tends to hide the effect more and it's easier for your eyes to lock onto it. Uh, there's also a ghosting effect that happens when you're working with texture layers where your 3D object, if it's in the center of the frame, you'll see ghostings and almost echoes of it moving outward in each slice. And by having a motion texture, it can hide some of that. So uh, your brain just filters it out. Um, and then lastly, I would say that uh, if you are trying to create interesting glitches like we did in, uh, in our texture layer or things synced with the music, uh, you probably want to stretch any of the effects or color effects that you're doing on the uh, texture layer across the entire horizontal width. So they reach end to end. And what that does is that when they appear on the larger image, even though they're tiled all the way across, uh, horizontally, they will stretch from edge to edge and it becomes a more invisible uh, effect. So just to recap, you, you bring in a depth map, created in another program, bring in the depth map, 
uh, you select it in your auto stereogram. Uh, you can choose random dot or texture. If you choose the texture method, you also import your own texture. It could be any size, it could be full screen, it could be whatever, but the plugin will only sample like kind of the middle slice of it and that's what it tiles across the screen in the displacement way. So that's it. This is Auto Stereogram by Motion Boutique. I'm Luca and uh, that's Jared. And uh, check out our video for Soons where we created a whole music video using this technique. And uh, I can't wait to see what you guys make. Have fun.